Idaho County is the largest county in the state of Idaho, extending from Montana to Oregon. The county encompasses 5.4 million acres or 8,438 square miles, including the Salmon River Canyon, three wilderness areas, plus private and public lands near Riggins, Grangeville, and Cottonwood. The county's enormous size, as well as its steep, rugged mountains, presents a big challenge for the Idaho County weed management crew. The county also grapples with large infestations of notoriously aggressive noxious weeds, such as yellow star thistle, rough skeleton weed, and others. In partnership with state and federal agencies, and the University of Idaho, Idaho County uses cutting-edge technology, computer modeling, biocontrol methods, and direct control to hold the line on noxious weeds as best they can. We've eradicated at least a half a dozen weeds totally from the canyon here. And we have other weeds where we've stopped their march, as in case the yellow star thistle stopped the march south. And so, yes, we are winning the war. Overall, there are 64 species of noxious weeds in Idaho statewide. Depending on location, Idaho County battles more than half of those species every year. The first line of defense is to kill new weeds. When we get a new weed coming to this county, we prioritize it as a number one. So we have a map or an inventory of that weed. And then we send the troops out to eradicate, not maim, not torment, but to eradicate and get rid of that particular plant. The county weed control crews log data into HP IPAC units in the field, then transfers the data to a computerized database and checks those areas in the future to make sure the weed has been eliminated. Crabtree says a thorough inventory is crucial for keeping track of weed infestations. We have people who go out and start spraying but don't realize that they're just creating a hole in a donut. They sprayed what was in front of them and didn't realize that they were surrounded. We found that our best tool for treatment is to go out and, and identify the target with a good inventory system. A key example of that is how Idaho County has been preventing the spread of yellow star thistle in the Salmon River Canyon. Yellow star thistle is one of the largest noxious weed problems in the county. The weed covers over 53,000 acres in the Salmon River area, causing damage to private grazing lands, public rangelands, and harming the economic and ecological potential of the land. 20 years ago, when the Salmon River Weed Management Area was established, officials identified natural geographic barriers on both sides of the canyon where they could try to stop the advance of yellow star thistle. To my left is Poodle Creek, Poodle Creek was chosen to, to stop the advance of the Yellow Star on the west side of the river because of the canyon, the geographic features. We have a north slope and timber coming into it and very little Yellow Star south of Poodle Creek. South of Poodle Creek is an eradication zone. We go to those three sites three times during the growing season to make sure there's no seed produced that year and we're being very successful in that. The Idaho County weed crew does the same thing on the opposite side of the river in Wet Gulch. For almost 20 years now, they've stopped the yellow star thistle from spreading up canyon. Jeff Shin says that line of defense is pretty critical. We've all seen what yellow star thistle has done in Hell's Canyon and on the lower Salmon River, and we don't want it to spread upriver. Biocontrol methods for controlling noxious weeds are a work in progress for many species. But for Dalmatian toad flax, a stem mining weevil is showing great results. Lynn Danley of the BLM released the weevil 15 years ago in the Salmon River Canyon below Cottonwood. What we do here is actually, I was putting the insects out on individual plants and wishing them well, and they became established and, and are doing what we want for this weed population here. Mark Schwartzlander, an entomology professor at the University of Idaho, explains how it works. The insect that we are excited about for the animation toad flags is a stem mining weevil. His name is Masonus gentiniformis. So what the weevil does is it lays its eggs into the stem of the animation toad flags during the time that the stems are growing. And of the egg hatches a little larvae and the larvae will mine within the stem and basically lead to very symptomatic um, damage. If we release 200 weevils, we can expect that about four years after that release, um, the Dimation toad flax population will 
probably crash. So 90% of the population will basically get eliminated. This is excellent news, yes. And I will be, in all honesty, uh, say that not every weed has a biocontrol agent or biocontrol agent combinations that work as successfully as um, this particular combination does. As a case in point, multiple biocontrol methods have been tried to combat yellow star thistle, but none of them are very effective so far. All the seed head insects combined reduce seed production of yellow star thistle anywhere between 75 and 90 percent. And you would think that's great, and yet it doesn't do anything. The problem is the noxious plant produces more seed heads later in the growing season after the biocontrol insects have moved on. However, there is another biocontrol agent on the horizon that could have a much greater impact. It's a weevil that attacks the roots of the yellow star thistle. We really do believe that that, that weevil um, will be a game changer for the management of yellow star thistle. The weevil may be available for use in one to two years once it's approved by the federal government. One noxious weed in Idaho County that's very difficult to control is rush skeleton weed. The noxious plant has been spreading throughout the state of Idaho since the 1960s, including in Idaho County. That is the one in the class by itself. With rush skeleton weed, we can kill the weed. It's not hard to kill. The problem is finding it. And because it blows so far in the wind, and we have a lot of wind, we really don't have a good strategy for being able to contain that stuff. However, Tim Prather of the University of Idaho helps predict where the seeds of rush skeleton weed will blow with computerized wind modeling. When we take a look at the country we got around us and you, you look at the extent of the landscape, you look at the steepness of the slopes, when we think in terms of trying to go out and search and find plants, it's a pretty daunting task. If you find a, a patch, what other places around you might those seeds fly to? Because they are, they are light seeds and they are going to go with the wind. So we look at this wind modeling and we can tell you, based on which canyon you're in, what direction the winds are gonna go during the day. And that's when the seeds are gonna fly. So, so we're able to more accurately predict where to look for this plant. Prather also cross-references the potential spread of the weed seeds with vegetation maps and assigns a risk to the spread. If rangelands are degraded, the land is more at risk to the spread of weeds versus lands with healthy landscapes. Our best strategy is going to be maintaining good, healthy landscapes. And then when we get invasion, it won't be so severe. We've got to work at this healthy landscape idea and do better at restoration, revegetation, or maintenance of existing uh, intact grasslands. Crabtree shows an example of native grasslands high above the Salmon River. This is an intact grassland. Uh, it has a number of perennial grasses in it, bunch grasses, sod formers. Uh, we've got a number of forbs in here. This is quite resistant to weed invasion. And so we're trying to protect it, uh, keep it that way, keep the weeds out and leave it uh, so that we can have some sort of a sustainable landscape for the future.